so with this background let us get started on our first problem okay and the problem will be obviously passive learning because we'll build from passive to active we will do policy evaluation pretty much like we did in the uh, mdp le le lectures so we are given a policy pi we want to compute v pi the same thing and v pi is defined as the expected discounted reward while following pi starting in a given state and of course remember we don't know transition function we don't know reward function but we can execute the policy and simulate okay and let's assume we are in a weak simulator world so we want to find, uh, solve the general enough problem and the key idea that you will learn today is to compute expectation by taking average over samples that's it if you know this idea well and i think you know but you haven't maybe explicitly seen it in this form or maybe you have then everything is a just an application of that carefully and intelligent so what is this idea of computing expectations by taking average so let's say my goal is to compute the average age of all all of you okay and while you think that the average age would be you know 20 but it may not be because there are some master students there is a couple of phd students there are some uh, advanced uh, students possibly you know who did not do it last year there are some students who are from a different university outside the country so the ages may be very different right so let's say this is our goal right and so we can always use the formula for expectation now suppose i give you the probability of each age this is akin to known model i know the model like i know the transition function and reward function so keep thinking at the back of your mind so suppose i give you the probability of each age so i tell you the probability of the age being 20 is 0.6 and probability of age being 21 is 0.2 uh, and probability of age being 22 is 0.1 and so on then can you compute the expectation you will simply use the formula for expectation of a discrete random variable and you will just do sum over a p of a times a where a is your age p of a is given to us it's the probability of each age and so you can say okay, 0.35 into 20 plus point whatever into 21 and so in our world 0.6 into 20 plus 0.2 into 21 and so okay. now this is the easy part suppose i don't tell you the probability of the age what would you do come on the question is clear right so i am not giving you probability of the age so what will you do ask people so you ask somebody they say 20 you ask another person they say 21 you ask somebody else they say 20 you ask somebody else they say 19 you get this data so you have now generated samples for the age a1 a2 up to an what do you do next well you can do two things can somebody see that we can do two things okay so purva so what is the obvious next thing we can do exactly so purva says the obvious next thing possibly to do is to compute probability of this age by sampling right how would you compute probability you will take samples of various ages and you would take how many times the age came out to be that number divide by the total number of samples and that gives you the estimated probability so this you would do where you would compute p hat of a let's say hat means that this is my estimated version and you compute p hat of a as number of times a came divided by the total number and now that you have the probability distribution you can compute an estimated expectation by simply taking the formula and putting in p hat instead of p and in the limit of infinite samples this gives you the right expectation in the case in the limit of all of your ages being sampled this gives you the right number this is what i am calling the model based computation of expectation and this works because eventually you learn the right model 
right? So in the limit of lot of samples, you finally learn the right model or as more and more samples come, your p hat becomes closer and closer to p and eventually your expectation becomes closer and closer to the original expectation. However, you can alternatively do a second thing. What is the second thing you can do? You can forget estimating probability of A and simply take the average of all the ages. Now why does this give us the right expectation? This gives us the right expectation because the ages are not uniformly distributed in this computation an age which has higher probability will come many more times. The same fraction more times compared to a different age, right? So, if I had probability A1 and probability A2, A1 was 3 times more likely as A2, then I will have 3 times more samples of A1 and you know less samples for A2. So, when I do the sum in the numerator, when I take the average, A1 would be you know added 3 times more than A2 and this would be the correct expectation. So, this works because samples appear with the right distribution and this is your key point. If you understand this slide, you will understand a lot of what is happening in this particular uh, topic. Whenever you see that I have to compute expectation and I have to do it by sampling, you should quickly recognize that there are two ways to do this. One is to estimate probabilities and then take the expectation or other is to not estimate the probabilities, get samples with the distribution of the probabilities and then take the average. Any questions on this? Yes. Sir, if you in the unknown model based learning, if you substitute P A hat with num of A divided by n, you are getting the same formula as the uh, uh, model free learning. So, in just one of data collection, how can you say that these two methods are different? So, Jay says why are these two methods different and there is a short answer to this. He had a long question, but there is a short answer to this. The short answer is that in the second version, even though I can estimate p hat a, I am not estimating p hat a, that is it. That is the only difference. Eventually, these are mathematically consistent things. So, if you try to estimate p, estimate p hat with the same distribution, you are going to get the right thing. If you take, take the model based version, you are going to get the right thing. The beauty here is and this is I mean this does not look apparent in this slide, but it will look apparent when we are doing one step at a time and doing online estimation and so on and so forth in RL. But basically the beauty is that if our goal is expectation, in the first case we first estimate p hat and then estimate expectation. In the second case, we can estimate p hat, but we do not estimate p hat and just take the average. That is the only difference. And now, we will even think about how many parameters are we estimating. Let us think about how many parameters are we estimating. In the unknown model case, how many parameters are we estimating? Let us say your ages can be anywhere from 18 to 60. How many parameters are we estimating? We are estimating. 43 parameters in the first version, right? In the second case, how much are we, how many parameters are we estimating? Do you see the difference? Now, you were asking what is the difference? The difference is that in one case, I am estimating too many more parameters. And if I believe that estimating them correctly requires me to take more and more samples, then I might get a better of uh, convergence in the second case with fewer number of samples. So, there is a uh, sample complexity issue here as well. Okay. So, this is our goal and this is what we are going to do. So, we will first talk about model based learning. Model based learning is going to be simple, then we will talk about two methods for model free learning. We will see how far we can go today. So, our goal today, first goal is to given a policy pi estimate v pi using model based learning, right. Model based learning means learn a model, learn a model empirically. What does that mean? That uh, you maintain estimates of transition function, you maintain estimates for the reward function. And then uh, after you have uh, given a certain estimates, you just use the uh, equations for v pi, which are the system of linear equations that we did in the last week and then you plug in uh, t hat and r hat, which are the estimated versions and then that is it. 
let us like take a very simple example, this is the example that we will work with uh, for the first few slides. So, let us say I have this grid world, I have 12 states and 4 possible actions up down left right. My reward of every action is minus 1 except when I reach A 4 or C 4, when I reach A 4 I get a reward of 100 I stop, when I get C 4 I get a reward of minus 100 I stop. So, these are absorbing states, discount factor is 1. Okay. Now, somebody gave me this policy pi. This policy pi says uh, these are the actions you should do in any of uh, in all of these states. By the way, any intuition on when might this policy be the optimal policy? But this is is this suggesting the Manhattan distance version? it is saying go down in A 1 and why do I want to go down in A 1 if I finally want to reach A 4 with the 100 reward. Yes, first. It might happen that the probability of jumping from A 2 to A 3 is much higher than the probability of jumping from A Yeah, so it is possible that going from A 2 to A 3 is low. When might that happen? Let us say when there is a wind blowing on the opposite direction or there is a very strong wind blowing. So, when I try to go from A 1 to A 2 taking the right action maybe I you know go elsewhere, it is possible. So, uh, so therefore, maybe the alternative policy is to go through the B row because uh, the B row there is no wind. So, I can be more careful about what is going to happen. Right. So, you never know. See we are assuming that by taking the right action we go to the next grid, but the transition function is not known to us. Anything could be happening here. It could be that there is a you know big. Uh, uh, a big uh, you know monster sitting in one of the grids and he is going to eat you in one of the, we know nothing. We are not even given this plus 100, minus 100 and minus 1, we are not even given that. We are only given these actions in the each grid and our goal is to figure out how good is this policy, right. So, all our intuitions about transition reward are the intuitions that we may have, but the model does not have that. And how we are going to do this is that we will be given some data. Let us say we are given this data or how we can con collect this data. Given policy, we can just take those actions uh, from different starting states and generate data, right. We do not, it is not a control problem, it is not deciding the action. We know the action because the policy is given to us. So, we can just quickly generate data. So, let us say this is the two trajectories that we generated. We started in A 1 and kept taking the actions that were given to us up, down, left, right. And then in one case we went A 1 B 1, B 2 B 3 uh, which is here and then we tried to go up, but we, uh, we, we went up A 3 when we tried to go right we went to A 2 by some for some reason then we went down then we went to B 2 then we went uh, B 3 and then we went uh, up again and then we went to this 100. So, this is one of the trajectories that we are given. A different trajectory you know when we try to go B 3 up we go to C 3 and then we try to go to C 3 up we go to C 4 right. So, this is a different trajectory that is given to us. We do not know the probability distribution. Now, given this can I estimate the probability of uh, let us say transition function A 1 D B 1. What is the probability that in action uh, in state A 1 when I take the down action I go to B 1. 1. What is the probability that in state B 3 I take the up action and go to A 3? So, in state B 2 I B 3 I take the up action and I go to A 3. What is the probability? Well, B 3 to A 3 happens once, B 3 to A 3 happens twice, but B 3 to C 3 happens the third time. So, that probability would be 2 by 3 and of course, we do not want 1s and 0. So, we may want to smooth these things. We can also check rewards. How, how, what is the reward that one from A 1 to down action we go to B 1 and get reward of minus 1. Uh, what is the reward we get? We get minus 1 and if different times we get different rewards then we can take an expectation of the rewards as well or the average of the rewards. See rewards need not be deterministic. It is possible that somebody is tossing a coin and giving us a reward like in the slot machine. I do the slot and I you know sometimes I win a lot of money, but most often times they take my money. So, that is also 
a reward distribution. So, somebody is sampling a coin and giving me a reward that is also possible and the model takes care of it by just saying that I will compute the average reward. So, now I have been able to compute the transition function. Once I have been able to compute the transition function, I can just put it in the equation that I had and compute V pi. This is called model based learning. It converges to the correct model with the infinite data if no state is starved with the correct model V pi is computed accurately and now the question is how do we do model free learning right by using expectation as the average of samples. So, this is model based learning because I am estimating the model and then taking expectation by using the formula for expectation. 